PK Subban in town uh, with the Subban Defense League. You can find out more information at SubanDefenseLeague.com. The Nashville Predators defenseman joins us on the line right now. PK, thanks for doing this. Hey, Brian. Hey, JD. Thanks for having me. Uh, so an incredible summer for you. I've seen pictures of, the, of you yachting. Of course, you're on the, the cover of Sports Illustrated, the uh, most fashionable 50 as well with, uh, with Lindsey Vaughn. But you were not listed as the most fashionable. Were you given some misleading information? Did you think you would be, because you're on the cover, the most fashionable athlete? No, not really. I mean, I, I mean, you know, it's, I, I don't know how those are being selected. Um, for me, I think it's a huge gesture to be on the cover. Um, I think that speaks for itself. There's a lot of fashionable athletes out there, if you've noticed now, uh, compared to, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, you know, there probably were a few athletes, and I think of a few off the top of my head, but Joe Namath being one, you know, David Beckham, guys who, uh, really showed the style and kind of fashion through their profession and what they do. Um, but nowadays, you're seeing more and more athletes, especially on the, the male side, that are stepping up and having an interest in how they look. And so there's a lot of – there's a lot of – so for me, I'm just happy to be in the category. Um, you know, I never thought that I would be in any type of category. I just kind of wear what's in my closet. Uh, you know, I, I like to shop. I like to buy new clothes. I like – my tailor-made suits, but um, to think that that would put me on a, you know, a magazine cover, um, you know, I never thought that that would happen. So I was just excited to be on the cover. I don't appreciate the whole, I just wear what's in my closet. Oh, yeah, you got a lot of big like, hats like, in your uh, closet? No, wow. I was like, no, that was just like our <laughs> closets are all the same. Like, yeah, I just got a couple dress shirts in there, a couple things, just throw it all together. Like, yeah, this <laughs> yeah. is a little bit different. So uh, I saw your reaction. Well, you know what? what? Go ahead. Yeah, no, what's what's what what may seem kind of crazy for other people is maybe normal for me. So, you know, it's all it's all relative to the the player, you know. It's that's the the player and the athlete, the person, it just depends on on what you like. So, you know, I buy what I like and then I wear it. <laughs> okay, so speaking of which, I saw your reaction to the DeRozan trade yesterday. Uh I saw it quoted and, and yeah, it makes sense that you're empathetic to a, a star player getting moved from a market where he was loved and he loved the market back. Your reaction very different from, say, Milan Lucic's, who uh, was a little bit more blunt when it came to DeRozan. Uh, he was like, yep, no, I don't, no one cares. No one cares about how you feel. You were a little bit different. But come on, you're a, little, you're a Raptors fan. Like, you're a little, you got to be a little excited about Kawhi, though, right? Well, here's the, anybody can look back to when I was traded in the interviews that I did. Um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, the opportunity for me to sort of take the high road and um, you know, there's a lot of different emotions that you feel when you get traded. You know, that's just the way it is, especially when you're in a place for a long time. He was in Toronto, I think, longer than I was in Montreal. Uh, but with everything that I did with the hospital and the commitments that I made, obviously the decision to not have me there um, caused a big debate in terms of whether it was the right thing to do, the wrong thing. And, and obviously around his trade, there'll be, that'll be debated for years to come. Um, I think that in Toronto, though, they have a GM that's committed to winning. Um, and you know what? It's not, it's not easy. A sign of a good GM, it's not about the easy decisions, you know, to sign, let's say, a LeBron James when he's an unrestricted free agent. It's the tough decisions, too, that make, make you a good GM. And it's a tough decision because he's a great player. He's been uh, with the organization for a long time, has grown there. He's an all-star, well-liked by everybody in the city. He's a great guy. So, you know, personally, I know him. But I, I've also, on the other end, where I've been traded, and, and like I said, you, you have to move forward because there's another team that you're going to with teammates, with coaches, with fans, and they want to know that you're excited to come there too. So, you know, um, you, know, I, I, you know, I handle things a little differently than DeMar did. But um, you know what? Uh, at the end of the day, unless you're an athlete, unless you're a pro athlete in that position and you have a family and, you know, you expect to be somewhere for a long time. When you get hit with that, um, you know what, it's, it can be devastating. So, you know, I, I think everybody can understand exactly what he's feeling. But the reality is it's a business and everybody has to move forward. And, uh, you know, with Kawhi coming in, this guy's a superstar in the league. So, I mean, he's, he's that good. He's won, he's won championships, and I think he's going to help the team. So one thing, though, I would draw another parallel, though, is that even though, you know, you, you're right, you did take the high road. You didn't, you didn't blast anybody. You didn't, you didn't take any real shots. But I would say that you were honest and that you were honest about a lot of your feelings and even when you're talking about them today. And 
Mm-hmm. One thing Ben and I talk about a lot when, like, because we compare and contrast the NBA and the NHL and we talk about them, they're competing leagues. And one of the things that we love about the NBA is that it's become this 12 month sport, right? There's always things to talk about. And players are more emboldened to be themselves and express their personalities and express their feelings whenever they want. Like, you, you're seeing now a lot of guys, even in the league, starting to open up their own podcast, right? Like, CJ McCollum now has one, and JJ Redick has one, and Danny Green, who's now coming to the Raptors, is starting one up. Guys are not afraid to be themselves and to, to speak their minds and say how they feel. And, and one of the things I remember you saying on, on a podcast once was that a lot of hockey players maybe don't trust media members or that they don't believe that, and I'm paraphrasing you, you can correct me here, that sometimes that we have a tendency in this group to, to twist the narrative or to take things out of context and, and put them out on, on social media or whatever it is. And I wonder, though, if you feel like it's getting better for players, like in the NHL anyways, that more guys are feeling better about expressing themselves, if there's more power in terms of you know, having your own social media feeds, or if it's actually getting worse in terms of being able to just express exactly how you feel or speak your mind and have a personality in this league. Well, if we're talking about sports, let's talk about money because that's really what it's about. Uh, you look at the NBA, and the reality is that the top players make more money off the court than they do on the court. So they can be more frank. They can be more straightforward in terms of the decisions they make and what decisions they make off the court, off the field, um, You know, especially in basketball. Um, the players have much more of an influence because they make more money. I mean, like someone like LeBron James – signed a half a billion dollar, a billion dollar deal with Nike, and he's only getting paid $30 million from his basketball team. So, you know, it, 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 it's hard to control somebody like that because the reality is he doesn't really need the paycheck from his basketball team. Um, he's set to life, you know, and, and that's, a, that just, that's not just in his case. That's in a lot of the players' cases in the NBA. So the influence is different, you know, whereas in hockey, it, that's not the case at all. You know, um, the history shows I mean, the majority of hockey players, you know, make their most money um, playing hockey, you know, their player contract. And that gives the league more control. That gives the league more control over, you know, players and what decisions they make and how they structure things. And that's just the reality of it. That's the nature of the sport. That doesn't make the league bad or good. That doesn't make the players bad or good. That's just the reality of it. It's all based on dollars. And I think that you look at someone like LeBron James, who's opening up a brand new school now, who's funding a school, who has his own production company, who's got, he's got other things going on where he's making a lot of money, but he's also doing a lot of good things too. I mean, he does a lot of things in the community. And I think that a lot of players in the NBA are seeing that and everybody's trying to do their part for themselves. I think that's what you're seeing. So, you know, in, in regards to hockey, I think it's just, it's different. It's different it's in a different financial space. You know, I mean, you look at what the players are making in the NBA, look at what the hockey players are making, and there's a big, big difference in money. And I think that's a huge influence on what p- players are comfortable doing and what they're not comfortable doing. Yeah, I wish there were more Twitter wars in the NHL. Would make this job so much easier. <laughs> make it it's so great. Uh, that's why we enjoy hearing you, of course. Uh, before we let you go, uh, of course, you go a ways back with with John Tavares, the the newest member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Did you did you anticipate this happening? Did you have any insight? Did did he have any conversations with you? Would you have anticipated him choosing the Toronto Maple Leafs? No, you know what? In the past, I've, I've, there's players that I know and, and players that I've been close with and grown up with. Um, but when it comes to those decisions, that's a really personal decision. You know, it, it's based on your family, your girlfriend, your wife, you know, yourself, where you want to be. And nobody understands. That's the, that's the cool thing about sports is that there's so many different reasons of why a player can switch landscape, you know, uh, or where they play. I mean, it, it's not just always based on just hockey you know there's a lot of different factors and um that's why everybody needs to respect the player's decision on what what decision he makes when he has the right to test the market um you only probably get that opportunity once in a lifetime so um you want to make the best of it and i think being from toronto i think the new york islanders is a great organization i think uh with scott malkin and john ledecky i think they're doing the right things um, in terms of bringing in the likes of Lou Lamorello and, 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 and Coach Fox. Uh, you know, they're, they're definitely going to have a good team. They have a lot of young players. I think that um, it's going to be a good team moving forward with the new arena coming in in years to come. Uh, but for John, obviously, playing in New York for a long time, he made the conscious decision to want to play in his hometown. And 
he has every right to do that. I mean, you know, it's, it's Toronto is the mecca of hockey. Um, you know, it's the biggest market for hockey in the world. And, you know, he's a star player who's played in the league for a long time, deserves every penny that he's getting paid, and has the opportunity and wants the opportunity to win a Stanley Cup in his hometown. And I think, you know what, if, if that's what he wants to do and that's the decision that he and his family has made, I think good for him. Good for him. I don't think we see that enough in the league where guys take it upon themselves to really try to make their dreams come true, you know, and not just do what everybody says that you should do, whether it's to resign or, you know, to, to be conservative. I think that players should be should think big and want to want to uh, make their dreams come true. And it was a dream for John to, to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs and win a Stanley Cup, and he's going to have that opportunity now. You get to decide on who you get to hard match against. The Tavares line, the Matthews line, or the Kadri line? Who do you choose? Um, I think I would, I would want to probably take Kadri first because I feel like that's the meat and potatoes line. And when you bang them around and you, you, know, you, you inflict your will on them, then everybody else is going to know what's up. So I think that would set the tone for the other two lines that are probably going to be a little bit more skilled. That's not to take away from John or, or uh, Mr. Matthews, but um, I'd start off with Naz. And I know Naz pretty well, so I could probably get in his kitchen pretty easily. You know what I mean? Stir the pot a little bit. Uh, I love that. Uh, great answer. Uh, check out SubanDefenseLeague.com. PK Subban. Uh, thanks for doing this, PK. Thanks, man. No problem. And I want to give a shout-out to Naz. I know he just got married the other day, so... Uh, just want to give him a shout out. Wish he and his wife good luck. I know they're going on, uh, I think their honeymoon now. So just want to give a shout out to him. Oh yeah, this good will get back now. to him. Now that you've called him out, of course he's going to hear about this. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I called him out, so he knows I'm coming. But I'm sure <laughs> it's not going to surprise him. I'll tell you that right now. There's nothing that uh, he's going to hear that's going to surprise him in this interview. So, but uh, congrats again, Naz. Good luck.